Yeah, you remember me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I um uh, I called um the the um, council member, Marion Barry, and I told Marion I wanted to have this um, to meet with you guys. And um, I know the mayor has come up with a program called One City, One Hire to hire the city residents. And I belong to the old school, okay, where they talk about the commitment, and the politicians talk about the commitment to hire and help minorities. Okay? But my only commitment is to hire and hire black folks. Because I think that you guys are the ones who are in desperate need. Right now in this country, we have more black folks in prison than we had in slavery in 1850. Think about that. More black folks in prison than we had in 1850. Some of you, I remember, have been in business for 30 years. You were young men, playing around. I was doing work at Howard, around the city, struggling. And you guys got into drugs, little drugs, little crap, whatnot, and you got locked up. Some of you were serious criminals, I don't know. But a lot of you guys that I know when I remember just got locked up for bullshit. Bullshit. You wasted your life in prison. But this is a new day. And for us who have been fortunate, to strive and survive in this society. It's our obligation to give back. And that's why I'm standing here today to talk to you all. To talk to you all to see that you have an obligation also, not for yourself, but to the middle generation. Because before you came, you have people who would pay the price for you. And you guys got distracted. For whatever reason, and got into nonsense and got locked up. Why would you want to spend the rest of your life in jail? For what? You only live here once. Why don't you get serious and be a good human being where you can be a contribution to society? Where you can help others. You can help yourself and you can help your race. Because as a black man, we are on the siege. You guys yeah. remember when this city used to be called Chocolate, chocolate City? What happened to the chocolate? Yeah. What happened to the chocolate? That's some cream in it. That's some cream in it. We have to blame ourselves. You cannot blame all the others. We have to blame ourselves. Because we don't work together, we don't see the bigger picture, and we don't see that this America was built, this city in particular, by that. But go downtown at night. Who do you see, Who do you see occupying the condos? Who do you see occupying all this nice work that's going on in the city? Because there was a design. But one thing you've got to understand, you've got to learn to hide back. And you've got to be smart in how you hide back. The strategy that you use in the 60s, that's going to be the strategy today. And you guys are the soldiers in that battle. You guys are the soldiers in that battle. What, how many years ago? Is it about 15 years ago, 10 years ago? And that was a wake up call. The wake up call. <coughs> and what I'm trying to do here, as the largest African American contractor in this town, to survive in an industry that's very racist. Construction is a very racist industry. 
They will not hire them. <coughs> so they form the association, and we struggle to get in the unions who not let us in. In 1932, President Roosevelt's wife had to intervene for us to work on the Uber Dam. So men and women have struggled who wanted to work just to have the opportunity. Just to have the opportunity to feed their family. But they don't have the opportunity. And here are you guys sir, today, 2012, and there's an opportunity in this land. Opportunity in this land where you can make a living. Where you can make a decent living. Okay? We just finished a school called Motil. We did Motil, Motil Elementary. <coughs> We are the general contractor. I um, have a joint venture partner, good company, but they're like every white company. So I have blacks into the army. But I told them, as long as Parkinson is around, as long as Parkinson is a joint venture partner, that we have 51% of the deal, I control the shop. And see that you guys get work. As long as you're serious, you have the right attitude to do work. Now, as I said, I met with you guys several months ago. We hired a few of you. And one guy that we hired, I'm not sure, I don't have the stuff, he's been accused now. One person that we hired went to Virginia. Went to Virginia and robbed the jewelry store. They robbed the jewelry store and they call me and they say, We saw someone with packets in vest who robbed this store. And he killed the man. <coughs> he killed the man. He killed the man. He killed. He robbed the stock and he killed. He killed. He killed the stock. He killed. He killed the stock. He gave us a reason. So I thought about it. I said, you know, here I am, trying to help, trying to make a difference in your lives. And here is this guy, going out there, robbing the stock. Killing this man, depriving his family of the bad. I say, is it worth me doing this? Why, why, why bother? You know, why bother? Maybe it's a waste of time. These guys are not serious. Why should I risk my company? Why should I risk myself and come and say I want to hire ex offenders? But then I thought again. I said, you know, in life, nothing is free. Nothing is free. If you want to make a difference, you're going to be faced with challenges. You're going to be faced with challenges. And that was one of the challenges I faced. To make a decision whether I want to continue this. And I concluded that no. You're going to do this. I'm going to continue to do this. Because it's not by accident I'm standing here today talking to you all. Because there are people who pay the bigger price for me to be able to stand there today and talk to you all. So where I want to start with this now is for you all, like I said the last time, to make that commitment. To make that commitment. That you're going to change your life. It's going to change your life. That if Nigel Parkinson is standing here and he's going to give me a job where I can make a decent living, you know, to feed my family, maybe that little kid in the neighborhood looking at me every day and saying, you know, Mr. Joe, he wakes up in the morning. He goes to work. I want to be like Mr. Joe. I want to be like Mr. Joe. 
but to make a difference in somebody else's life. To make a difference in your own life. And my commitment is to see that every job that we have in this city, which we've been doing quite a bit of schools, every job that we have in this city, that you guys should have an opportunity. To be self performed missing you. And we're going to be doing Dunbar. And if you come with the right attitude, the right discipline, and say, you know, I'm going to work for this company. I'm going to give it all. Because we are all in this together to make it. We just be the big school here, this time high school. As a general contractor. If we get value high school, every single one of you guys will have an opportunity to work. Not even not for us, but with the other contractors. You come here, you say, I want to work, I'm going to make sure you get a job. I'm going to make sure you get a job that they hire every single one of you, but you cannot bullshit. They see us because you are an example. Right now, the federal law put it that you as your parents cannot work on federal projects. But if you guys can show, we just as good, we made our mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. We made a mistake, but we won a second chance. We are still alive. A lot of your friends are dying. When you look back and say, why did that guy die? Think what he did. Was he a bad guy? What, how, what was so awful? Was his life so miserable that, you know, he just have to die like a little dog on the street? But she is still alive. And you have a chance. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity where you can move forward and make a difference. So this is a dialogue or a partnership that I want to have with you guys. That you guys should have to police yourself to make sure the bad apples don't just spoil for the men. That when I give you a chance, when I give you an opportunity, give up. Okay. When I give, where is Michael? <laughs> when I give you a chance, I give you an opportunity. You go out there and make the best of it. Make the best of it. Make the best of it. You come from a strong, long tradition. Now, how many of you guys watch the um, tennis match last year? Mm. Three. Three. You see, that tells you a lot about the human spirit, that human determination. She was down. She was almost going to lose, but she showed at the end. You come from a strong and determined race. Make the best of it. Make the best of it. Make the best of it. No one has to tell you. You have to show, and you have to demonstrate, because you have it in you. You have it in you. So we're going to take applications today. We'll take the application. I got um, Dominique here with me, and you guys are going to fill it out. We're going to take it to the office, and we're going to screen it. And as soon as we get, you know, um, done by Stan Island, I'm going to start hiring you at Tonga. When we get, if we get Balus, you guys should be like, and Balu will be, you know, finished by the time we finish Tonga, Balu should be ready to go. You guys are only love it. It's a big project. It's what? Who ain't hear that? What did he say? He said he's going to put you on Dunbar, and then he got Baloo coming right behind him. So you talk about at least three years worth of work. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. He didn't say that, man. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say? He said that the Baloo project is going to start. He said the Baloo project, man, is about to start. No, he said Dunbar. He said Dunbar. And when Dunbar finished, he made it put you over in the Duke Baloo. That's what he said. I don't know. You the closest person to him. He's talking about Baloo. He's talking about Dunbar first. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 wait, okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. Okay, what's your question? I respect everything you're saying and I understand what you're saying. But I mean you basically you stood in front of us and told us the same thing. 
few weeks, I mean, a couple months ago. Yes. So, I guess you said you hired a couple of people? We hired a few people. We hired a few people at Moti. I'm sorry they're not here. But a few of them were work at Moti School. We had they work at Moti. They work at um, that... Um, John, a turn. That's uh, that school, Turner Elementary. Turn, turn they work yeah. at Turner Elementary School. They work at a school called Meridian Meridian School on 13th Street. So we use them. Those are not big projects. Yeah, so you know, but they work on those, they work on those jobs. Uh, and to add to that, uh, uh, the, the, the Moton project comparable to the Dunbar and uh, the Lou project is, is a very small project. Blue in Dunbar is a, is a much larger project. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? How long? How long? Are you? You know, okay, okay. Uh, wait for tomorrow. You know, yeah, okay. I just want to ask a question. Uh, okay. Basically, you know, we worked up at a Morgan Elementary, right? You work for me, right? Yeah, I, no, I ain't work for y'all, but you at work? the time, you know, because we had came up here like the day that you told you that um, y'all was going to go, y'all said y'all was going to try to get us on a project, but what happened was we went up there at that time with environmental services, right? And we went up there and tore down the whole city like the demolition. And I came back with William T. Call construction and we went to put the windows in. Okay. And then we came back up there again, work with National Service Contractor down the street from here. Okay. And what they were doing was they was they was also just trying to paint the room. So I was waiting on you because uh, I gave my name to the guy there. He said he will give my name to you. It's not okay, well if we have application, you're gonna fill the application, you know, since yeah. you, you walk in, that's that's good. Okay. Um, I just want to say I appreciate what you're doing because I've been in the trade for man, like 25 years, great trade. I've seen the transition. And I know about how I ain't, I ain't raising nothing, but the Spanish people is taking all the jobs. And so I see what we like uh, down at the bottom of the minority pole. Um, concerning the job site. So everybody we can get to be on our side, everybody in here should appreciate it. You get a job, you should come to work every day because you, you, you get make it better for your kids. I'm trying to tell you, my, I'm, I feel for my kids because I want them to be able to get a job. And the only way it's going to happen is if we get men like him to continue to support us. Y'all support us. Even though y'all, it went slow, from one job to the other, y'all gotta be patient, man. Y'all know how to trade these. Okay.